Mama C Comedy Cube, you guys are in the house. Make some noise for you guys, you guys. Come on down, make some noise. We're gonna start the show, you guys. You guys are in for a real special treat, you guys. This man coming up, you guys, he is hilarious. I've seen him all over, you guys. He's a warm-up comic on The Masked Singer, AGT, and Funny You Should Know, good for the very funny, Mr. Darren Kaposi! Give it up for Darren, you guys, make some noise. What is up, everybody? All my ladies make some noise. Let me hear my ladies in the audience. All right. All right. How about all, all my fellas? Let me hear the men in the audience. Where are you guys? Doing? All right. Where, where, are the, where, are the, where are the Geminis at? Where are my Geminis? All right. We found the crazy people. Thank you so much. You just admitted it right out of the gate. This is our first fight. I understand. <laughs> Happy birthday, dude. That's fantastic. That's all right. Once, keep it going. Your birthday, how old are you going to be? 28. 28. Good age, man. That's awesome age. It's awesome age. I, uh, I finished Netflix today. <laughs> all of it. I finished all of it. She just questioned me. Do you, all of it? Oh, I got it all covered. I'm moving on to Hulu. I, uh, I've been traveling with comedy lately, guys, and I uh, recently flew on Spirit Airlines. Yes! It's, it, get, <laughs> it gets a bad rap, doesn't it? But they were actually really kind to me. On the way home, they actually gave me a free upgrade. Yeah, that's very nice of them. They upgraded me to co-pilot, so fuck that shitty airline. <laughs> but I landed it, so... <laughs> Thank you. I recently did 23andMe, the DNA testing. Have you guys done that? To try to figure out what you're made of. And uh, I found out something interesting. It turns out everyone on my father's side of the family is still a fucking asshole. <laughs> Celebrating 13 years sober. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I don't want applause. I want Molly and Jim Beam. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just went, me too. <laughs> like the way this crowd parties. <laughs> I always get this question, though, man. I always get this question. Like, Darren, how'd you know you're an alcoholic? Like, what were your signs? And, and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm very transparent. You guys are a great crowd. This is how I knew I was an alcoholic. Because every time I drank, my body would have this really bad allergic reaction. My face would break out in cocaine. <laughs> I love the people that laugh the hardest. You know they've done blow. That's the best part. My, my, man, my lady in the back, you, you erupted so good. That's what I love. In the VIP section, you're like, whoop! You're like, I'm alone. I'm alone. A little bit about me. I have an undergrad and a master's in theater. Thank you. So I could be a... Thank you. Thank you. So I could be a better waiter. Thank you so much. That, that joke cost my dad a hundred grand. And he's got two jumps to prove it. <laughs> you guys, any of you guys done the dating on, during the pandemic? Anyone? You done some of the dating? It's, it's been difficult. I went on a date. On the, anyone on the Tinder? Okay, one in five. A bunch of you have a secret is all I'm saying. I met a girl, guys, has a girl ever said this to you on a first date? She's like, I just want you to know you can treat me like one of the guys. Yeah, she, she goes, I'm like one of your guy friends. I was like, that is awesome, because I fuck all my guy friends. <laughs> then we watch football, then we don't talk. <laughs> also the girl I went on a date, also had a lot of tattoos. I think, you guys got tattoos? I think tattoos are getting out of hand. I think people are confusing tattoos with journaling. <laughs> like, what happened? To, What's this over here? It's my grandmother. She died in the 80s. That's why it says, I ain't afraid of no ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Did someone say that I'm scared of you? Oh, no. That's, that's, or, am I, or am I having a stroke? Do you guys smell toast? <laughs> What's up? What's up, my man? What do you do for work? What's up? You what? 
quality control. I don't see it. <laughs> do, do you like your job, quality control? You don't like it, yeah, yeah. I had a lot of those jobs too, man. I used to work in commercial casting, which was great for my soul. <laughs> it, it was a good job, especially casting kids, especially casting Latinos. Where are my Latinos at? And yes, you guys have the coolest kids on the planet. Where are my white people at? White people, let me hear you. Your kids are retarded. I'm sorry, you're not allowed to say the word kids anymore. My bad, I will. I will work on it. It was a good job, especially casting the guys who were five to seven. And anytime those guys used to come in the room, after I asked their name and their age, I'd always mess with them and ask them if they had a girlfriend. All white kids would be like this. Hey man, what's your name? Steven Vanderpyre. <laughs> hey, hey Steve, how old are you? Five? Hey Steven, you got a girlfriend? Steven Vanderpile. <laughs> this one time, this kid came in my room. His name was Raul Diaz. He was not white. He was five years old, had spiked hair and cut off sleeves. I was like, hey man, what's your name? He's like, Raul Diaz. I was like, how old are you, Raul? He's like, five. I was like, Raul, you got a girlfriend? He's like, I just broke up with her and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> right? Fucking five-year-old wrote my best joke, so that's the... Uh, I'm obsessed with Chinese food. I know my transitions are seamless. But it doesn't matter where you are. When, I only order takeout Chinese food, and they're, it's, it's all, and it doesn't matter what city or state you're in. They're so nice to you when they take your order, but then they're so mean to their own. I went in the other day and I was like, hey man, can I get a chicken and broccoli and some fried rice? And he was like, oh yes. <laughs> chicken, broccoli, fried rice, that's a good order. That's a real good order. <laughs> oh, I like your t-shirt, it's a thug life, how ironic. <laughs> Hold on, I'll get that for you, I'll get that for you. Hold on. <laughs> Do you want an egg roll? I throw that in for you. Ha, da, 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 go! <laughs> Thank you. But then you're, then you're like, oh my God, I forgot to order a Coke. He's gonna fucking kill him. <laughs> Anyone hit as a kid? We gotta bring that shit back, don't we? I was hit as a kid, man. And, and the only reason I say we gotta, we gotta bring it back is because all my friends, they discipline their kids with timeout time. We all know what that is, right? Where the kid's bad and they put him in the corner and make him think about what he did. So I'm at my buddy's house and his, he's got a rambunctious five-year-old and he, he, he was planting these plants and he's on his, on his knees and his kid comes by with a lacrosse ball and fucking poof, right into his back. And he was like, oh, all right, timeout. <laughs> You stand over here and you think about what you did to daddy's back if you want to play baseball later. Think about that. My boy walks away. I walk over. I was like, yo, Finn, what are you thinking about? He's like, Transformers. <laughs> you know what my timeout time was when I was a kid? When my father was exhausted from hitting me and needed a cigarette break. Anyone else? That, uh, I've become this total, total magnet for people to tell me how much they detest Donald Trump. I don't know what it is about me, but this guy the other day was like, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> if Trump runs for president in 2024, if he runs for president, I'm moving, I'm moving out of the country. I was like, whoa, take it easy, bro. You're a fucking Uber driver. <laughs> now... Now get me to Spearmint Rhino. <laughs> My shift starts in two minutes. I think, I think my roommate's a prostitute. I have no proof, but my, 
But my friend the other day was like, you got to convince her. You got to convince her into telling you that she's a prostitute. Like, how does one do that? How do you, how do you convince someone? Are you guys okay? This isn't television. This is live. I can hear and see everything that's happening. That's, that's funny. Okay, I thought you were gonna... Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, birthday boy. You're the... You're the kindest heckler I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> it's just so sweet. You're the sweetest heckler. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Tell him how funny I am, because he hasn't smiled once, so that's fine. <laughs> this guy and the guy, the big guy with his arms head crossed, he is looking at me like, look at this weird-looking Adam Levine. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah, I got mirrors. I know what's happening. I know what's happening. Yeah, I know, like, my, my roommate's a prostitute. My friend the other day was like, you gotta just trick her. Trick her into telling you that she's a prostitute. I was like, how does one go about doing that? Is it like, when she, on her way out, I'm like, whoa, 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 Jen, before you go, can you help me out with this uh, equation? This, it take two seconds. So a train's leaving Chicago at 2 a.m. Okay, got it. Then another one's leaving Boston at 5 a.m. Does that make you a hooker? <laughs> That was the best laugh I've ever heard in my entire life. It was like she came out of a blackout. <laughs> what? We started at Shakey's. Now I'm at the Comedy Cube. Uh, a little bit about me, guys. I'm 47 years old, 38, uh, 38 on Bumble. And I just had sex with a 26-year-old. Yes. Yes, he was so into it. <laughs> no, I'm at this club, and I'm dancing, and I'm just, like, dancing with some chick. You know, what's up? Present. Pull it down. You can go, present. Now, you guys... You're looking at me going, that's a weird dance, but I know one of you fuckers is going to get drunk at a wedding and go, what's up, Grandma? <laughs> anyway, we dance all the way back to her parents' house. Whatever, she lives with her parents. Not so hot. But she takes me back to this gorgeous, gorgeous Malibu beach house, guys. Okay? It's three levels up. It's decorated to the nines. It's right on the water. It's the most expensive home I've ever been in my entire life. And as we're walking through her house, she's talking way too loud. I was like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I forgot to tell you. My parents aren't home. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to get laid and steal something, too. <laughs> so I walk throughout this house, and I come across a display case of Emmys. Turns out her dad's an executive of a very popular television show. Now, just because we're recording, I can't tell you the name of the show. I'll, I'll just give you the initials. NCIS. <laughs> so there I am. I'm in NCIS's house. And we start to hook up. And then she goes to me. She says, okay, pick me up. I like when guys pick me up and make love to me. Now... When you're 27 years old and a 26-year-old girl says, pick you up during sex, you're like, all right, get a running start. Come in on a stallion. Jump off the ceiling, right? But when you're 47, you're like, what? I mean, it's my own fault. I recently threw out my back guy. I play, I play a very aggressive sport in my 40s. I'm sure you all have heard of it. It's called reaching for an envelope. Has anyone played that recently? <laughs> anyway, I get her up into that millennial position. <laughs> and I back up against the wall. Can't blow a hammy. And I'm like, Alexa! Put on some John Mayer. <laughs> anyway, so we, we, we're, there we are. We're doing it, guys. And, we, and, and John Mayer is playing. Waves are crashing. And we lock eyes. And we have this beautiful moment. And all of a sudden, she looks at me and she goes, are you getting tired, old man? I was like, I'm fucking exhausted. 
is this a good time or a bad time to give a headshot for your dad? <laughs> I play a mean cop. There's more of this story. I got the light, but there's more of this story. I finished. I was excellent. <laughs> I, was, I was top notch. But we're lying in bed, and she's like, hey, just for the record, you're the oldest guy I've ever had sex with. <laughs> and that's the same laugh I did to her. I went, ha! that same laugh. And I was like, hey, just for the record, you're the oldest chick I've ever had sex with. <laughs> guys, that's my time. I'm Darren Capozzi. Thank you so much. You guys have been amazing. I appreciate it. This has been a Funny Media Group production.